Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. We've had an exceptional amount of solar activity over the past few days. We've had a flurry of solar flares, big explosions on the sun, over a dozen M-class flares, even a 1.1 X-class flare right there. That is the strongest type of solar flare. All these explosions on the sun, they release a ton of energy, light radiation, light photons, the light that we see. Also though, in other wavelengths like X-ray and extreme ultraviolet, ultraviolet. We also have infrared and radio microwave frequencies, all that coming into the earth just in 8.3 minutes, hitting the planet, irradiating it, and causing it to energize. And so this charges up the ionosphere, the uppermost part of Earth's atmosphere and as a result, charges up the global electric circuit. So Earth is effectively supercharged at this moment in time. Now we do have some solar storm impacts that have been expected. NOAA put out a cancellation for the G3 geomagnetic storm early today. We have had two coronal mass ejection impacts, but they've been fairly muted. So I'm not sure we're gonna get a geomagnetic storm at this moment in time, but irregardless, Earth is already very energized as a result of all this energy put into the Earth from these explosions and that solar irradiance, specifically the X-ray and extreme ultraviolet light, which is highly vibrational, it's the most energetic, that really gets absorbed nicely into the ionosphere. And while there's some interesting effects from that, what we've been seeing during this solar maximum for Solar Cycle 25 is an increasing amount of plasmoid sightings. Now plasmoids are these weird balls and structures of plasma, which is the fourth state of matter, a very highly vibrational state of matter. You have solids, which are slow and dense, liquids a little bit more energized and have a little bit more movement and fluidity to them, of course. Gases, now the molecules can break off from each other and ping around. Plasma, the molecules actually will start to break apart and ionize, you have charge carriers. But what we find is that plasma can take on very coherent structures and it can self-differentiate. It's not homogeneous, it's very heterogeneous. So it's very, very interesting. We know very little about plasma. It's very electromagnetic. It really isn't susceptible to the force of gravity just because of how strong the force of electromagnetism is. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some recent plasmoid sightings that we've had Actually, a moderator to my channel, Bree, Bree Soul Healing, I'll link her in the video description, she's fantastic. She caught a plasmoid on video last night, and maybe it's something just normal mundane, it doesn't look like it though. It does not look like a plane flying and then kind of leaving the view, it looks like a plasmoid. And we have other videos of plasmoids that you're gonna look at so you can see when these are undeniable and it looks like she caught a video of a plasmoid. So the plasmoids are here, and in fact, that is something that likely happens every solar maximum and descending phase, is that we get this increase in plasma activity. We also see that super bolt activity. The strongest of lightning bolts goes up dramatically during solar maximum. We have that data for solar cycle 24, and that was a weak solar cycle, and check out just how much that super bolt frequency went up. So we are going to be exploring plasmoids in crazy detail in today's video. Let's start right away with Bree's plasmoid sighting. This was just a couple days ago on December 7th, evening in Illinois. So here is the video that she took. And uh, what basically she saw this plasmoid up in the sky moving around. And then she's like, okay, I gotta get a video of this. And so she decided to pick up her phone and video it. And then right as she did, it finally faded out. So we got a little bit of footage of this thing, but it was up there for longer than that. She said it had a greenish color. You can kind of see that with the still image there. Also a Merkaba shape. And she clearly saw it with her eyes moving around. So this isn't just a video effect of like the camera got, she didn't see it. This was something that she saw very, very clearly. Uh, and so I see this and it's very interesting. You see it kind of move in this sort of pattern and then fades out. And so the only explanation I could really think of for this not being a plasmoid was that it was some sort of airplane that was flying low and it caught the light from the sun during evening and then just really lit up as a result. And as it turned, that uh, light reflection went away. And that is, that is a possibility, 
But the interesting thing here is that this doesn't appear to be that far away and I feel like you would still see the airplane because I see that all the time where I live because I'm close to an airport and yeah, you may get this increase in light from the reflectance of an airplane, but then when that's over, you still see the plane. And so here we just see it totally fade out. And that is a behavior that we often see with plasmoids is that they are these transient uh, things that are there one moment and then they're gone the next. And so this is the video that she took December 7th uh, in, uh, in and around the Chicago area. And here we see that still, and this is certainly uh, very interesting. Can't say definitively whether or not that this is a plasmoid, but considering all the solar activity that we've been having and the fact that Earth right now is supercharged as a result of that, I think it's highly likely that this in fact is a novel plasmoid sighting and Bree is very intuitive and she said that she's been feeling all these interesting energies as a result after that viewing. And you can start to talk about the spiritual dimension of these things if you want to. You can keep it just science if you want. You can talk about this, the spiritual aspects of this as well. So that is a little bit more evidence to that as well. Uh, let's check out some other sightings of plasmoids that occurred during this solar maximum. And here we have another plasmoid sighting from earlier in this solar cycle. This footage is from Andrew Musson. This is May 20th of 2023. And I think this is incredible footage of a plasmoid. You're seeing it here, folks. This has not been published online elsewhere other than a couple videos I showed this in earlier a, a while back. And so we see very clearly this luminous ore rising up from the ground. It's not that large. They can get very large. Uh, and then it quickly fade, fades out. And we also see that it has almost like this dust trail near it. And some of the reports of plasmoids are that they have this strong sulfur smell to them, like rancid almost. And they can be very short lived. They can also be very long lived at times. Um, so the fact that there's some sort of like remnant gas uh, emission around it afterwards, after it fades out, is interesting and would fit with some of the descriptions that we have historically of plasmoids or as they're also known ball lightning so this is a very very nice example of a small plasmoid seemingly rising up out of the ground of course remember the earth is very very electrically alive and so why this thing was there and why it came out these are all uh, questions to ask but the presence of a plasmoid isn't impossible. There, the Earth is a suitable place for these things to exist at times. And here we see a short-lived uh, plasmoid taken in New Zealand during the ascending phase, the very end of the ascending phase of solar cycle 25. And here we have probably the best footage of a plasmoid to date taken by Ed and Melinda Party. This was July 2nd of 2025. So this is solar maximum folks. And this was up in Alberta, Canada. And they were on their porch when they saw this massive ball of lightning moving across the field in the distance. And so this is a huge plasmoid and then you see it disappear. Now, if you watch really closely at the very end, you'll actually see three individual balls that uh, will appear after the main one disappears and then they all go together. So it goes from one orb to three to none. And this is exceptional footage. They just had a lightning storm roll overhead. So the atmosphere was very, very electrified as a result. And that's the sort of environment where these plasmoids are able to more easily exist. So you need a more energized planet to begin with. That would be solar maximum in general. Then also if you have a lot of nearby geoelectric and atmospheric activity, then that also is conducive for these sort of very rare sightings. And then also during a geomagnetic storm, you can see plasmoids. We have some footage of that even more recent. Let's check it out. And here we have a very unusual Aurora plasmoid that was picked up by Jeffrey Hahn during the G5 minus geomagnetic storm that we had back on November 11th of this year, 2025. And so it looks like Aurora, where you have the green lights pulsing, but it's highly localized. You see it flash and then disappears. So we've seen all the different shapes and structures to it now. The one that Brie took was very far away, hard to say what the shape of it was. The one in New Zealand is clearly a sphere. The one in Canada, a big honking sphere. This one, a little bit more elongated and 
uh, luminous in kind of like a col columnar way. Uh, definitely not a sphere, but very clearly a plasma phenomenon because the aurora are plasma. When you get the northern lights, the southern lights dancing across the sky, that's all plasma. Again, plasma is charged carriers, ions that are free floating, moving with the electromagnetic field, generating electric currents and more. So this is another good novel sighting of a plasma. We don't have that many. They seem to be becoming more and more regular. A lot of people will often uh, take these plasmoid sightings. It's actually just a star that's on the horizon. They think it's some like weird plasmoid. Uh, and then you actually look at the star map and it lines up with Jupiter or like Sirius or something like that. But these are all very clear examples of plasmoids. Though in the case of uh, Brie, I can't definitively say, but I think that's a plasmoid. Just based off of my observations and experience and research, that looks like a, a novel plasmoid sighting, which is exciting because now we have plasmoid sightings from the uh, late ascending phase of this solar cycle through solar maximum up till now, the end of solar maximum and the beginning of the descending phase. One reason why is because of all the insane excess energy that's pumped into the earth during solar maximum cycles. Solar cycle 25 has been stronger than solar cycle 24. And we saw a huge increase in the strongest of lightning bolts called super bolts during solar cycle 24. These are also similar to plasmoids in many ways. Let's check them out. The reason lightning and super bolts are similar to plasmoids is because, well, lightning is plasma. And the other word for a plasmoid is ball lightning. And that's literally what it is. So when you have this massive surge of electrical current going in between a thundercloud and the ground, that's ionizing the gas in between a whole bunch of free electrons. And then boom, that's your lightning bolt releases a whole bunch of visible light. We have plasmoids on the sun. So these things are everywhere across the solar system. Comets have a bunch of plasma around them. They therefore have plasmoids and all this and more. There's plasmoids in the solar wind. They're everywhere. Earth is no exception. Now, what's so interesting about lightning strikes is that sometimes they can get exceptionally large. Here we see a super bolt from April 29th of 2020. This is during the solar minimum, by the way. This is a record setter at 477 miles across. Just an absolutely insanely huge super bolt. And that is the scale that they can get to. Here we see our solar radio flux and super bolts going from 2010 to 2018. We see that during solar minimum, we had almost no super bolts that we observed. We don't have evidence for. And then going through solar maximum, we see that they increased dramatically and actually they were enhanced as well during the beginning of the descending phase. The so solar maximum for solar cycle 24 was effectively 2012 to 2014 or so. So they even peak during the end of the maximum phase and the beginning of the descending phase, which is where we are right now. The difference with solar cycle 24 and 25 is that 25 has been stronger. Sunspots never broke above 150 for solar cycle 24. Overall, sunspots have been higher for solar cycle 25. Our solar radio flux has been higher. And so it's very likely that we've been having a lot more super bolts and plasmoids as a result than the past solar cycle, each one being about 12 years long. So this is fairly new on a long time frame. Now we don't have that super bolt data at this exact moment in time. So it's usually you collect the data, crunch it a few years later, you get the research paper. But based off of what we know, we know that they're happening. We know that these plasmoids are happening. I showed you four different videos of plasmoids. And so they are here right now and more of them are gonna be manifesting over the next few months and even next couple of years as we go into the descending phase of solar cycle 25 and expect more of these things to occur when we have tons of solar activity from the sun, like with these solar flares, when you have big sunspots that are very active and unstable and they're just constantly exploding, releasing those light photons to earth, well, that's gonna ionize the upper atmosphere, increase that vertical electric gradient going from the ionosphere down to the ground surface, that in general seems to kind of increase any sort of weather activity that was pre-existing. So if you had like a, a rain cloud, maybe it becomes a thunderstorm. It just seems to intensify any pre-existing weather systems. So we have this possibility going forward that we're gonna be seeing more and more of these plasmoids. And 
based off of just kind of my observations, it seems that Earth is becoming more and more of a storm world because of how she's warming up and all these other energetic inputs that are going into her as a result of our own activities and also the space weather uh, and solar environment, the interstellar environment and more. So as we shift more into a stormy environment over the next decades and centuries, at least that's what I think the most likely trajectory is, these sort of rare plasma phenomenon are going to become more and more common. So be on the lookout. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Again, I've been your host, Stefan Burns. Smash that thumbs up button to help the channel grow. It really helps out. And subscribe to stay up to date with what is happening with the Earth energetically. I release videos almost daily. We look at earthquake activity, volcanoes, geomagnetic storms, severe weather. We also examine what's happening with the sun, of course. So that is solar activity, space weather, planetary resonances and planetary alignments. These are very important interstellar forces like interstellar comets and 3i atlas cosmic events and more so if you like the sound of that then please subscribe and an announcement is that we have a sale right now on the website this is earthevolution.com store where i sell my all organic holistic wellness uh, tea products and also some merchandise so channel merchandise and one of the big announcements is that we now have festivity in stock this is our newest tea blend perfect for the holidays and so this is uh now available we have a limited run that we're getting a lot more ingredients in so i would recommend if you want it for christmas to order this right away and this is an excellent blend it's super tasty i mean it's basically nostalgia in a cup it's super comfy and cozy uh and it has a variety of really good ingredients for you. So it's actually really healthy too. So it's burdock root, it's also apple, like apple pieces, then it's also uh, cherry, and then you have licorice root, chamomile, then you have a spice blend of star anise, allspice, cinnamon, and also clove. And combined, they just really synergize nicely. This stuff's incredible. We really land on something special. The, uh, all the ingredients are organic except for the apple and the cherry, but they are completely without additives, no sulfur, no sugar, nothing else. So this stuff's incredible. I recommend you pick it up uh, before it sells out. It's going to sell out instantly, but we have a lot more coming in. And so if it is sold out by then, you can check out the merchandise we have. We are in stock with all the other products, including spirituality. It is in stock, our top seller. So make sure you pick that up too. If you're interested in that, that's also a great tea blend for the holiday season and for when these energies are heightened, when you have these plasmoids flying around and geomagnetic storming and intense solar activity, helps you rest and relax, but it also helps you connect to these more etheric energy fields, enhances your dreams, perhaps even promotes astral travel. We've had some people report experiences of that. That's a very simple tea blend, a purple lotus flower, chamomile, passion flower, mugwort, it's incredible. So all this and more available at earthevolution.com slash store. And you can use the code thanks Stefan. All one word for 5% off that is linked in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm wishing each and every single one of you well. Please take care of yourselves. I'll see you all in the next video.